Are you interested in building simple sliding doors for your woodworking project? In this video I'm going to explain six important things to keep in mind if you want to do that. Hi and welcome, I'm Andreas. I recently built this sliding door cabinet, it was the second one that I've built and I've applied a couple of lessons that I've learned over the years and from the first build that I made and I'm going to explain to you these six important things to keep in mind um, if you want to build your own sliding door cabinet. The first thing you'd have to consider if you build your own sliding doors is if you want to run the doors in grooves like I did or if you want to use specific hardware for that. The hardware comes both in metal or in plastic and sometimes if it's for heavy doors with wheels and for not so heavy doors in just a sliding mechanism. So I decided on the grooves just in the wood which is the simplest version but of course if you get hardware it might run smoother, the, the doors might run more smoothly um, and more easily but of course then you'd have the extra cost and hardware is usually a little harder to install than just cutting grooves for the doors. If you decide on grooves, um, the question might be how do I get the doors in the sliding grooves and when the cabinet is assembled? And there are videos out there that tell you that you have to put in the doors before you assemble the cabinet because obviously how would you get them in there otherwise? But that's actually harder than it has to be because there is a very simple mechanism that you can use to get the doors in and out. And that is to have a top groove that's deeper than the bottom groove and then you can very easily lift the door in and push it up to the bottom of the top groove and that room there has to be higher than the groove is at the bottom and so you can slide in the door at the bottom while you lift it up and then you leave it and gravity will pull it down and it will still stick in the top groove but also in the bottom one and it won't fall out. So here's a drawing next to me with the measurements that I've taken for the top and the bottom groove. So if you want you can just pause the video here and look closely at those measurements and then I'm pretty sure you'll get the idea. Basically it comes down to this. Your door has to be a little bit higher than the distance from the bottom of your bottom groove to the underside of your top of the cabinet. Add to that, let's say, some 5 millimeters or some 3 16 of an inch. And that distance is then your length or the height of your door. And then you need to add as much room as your bottom groove is steep plus a little bit. And then you can lift the door up into the top groove and get it out. Point three is about the dimensions of the grooves. At the bottom I went for about five millimeters, that's about three sixteenths of an inch. That's perfectly enough to run a sliding door in without it jumping out by itself. Um, my grooves are about seven millimeters apart, that's just over a quarter of an inch. And that's because I don't want the ridge between the two grooves to be too thin because then I thought it might break easily. That depends on the material that you use. In my case it's plywood which makes such a ridge more rigid because you have the cross-layered the cross -layered plywood. If you use solid wood and the grain runs along that edge of that along the ridge then it might be actually too dangerous to have such a narrow ridge um, because obviously then it might easily break but that does happen more easily in a softwood than in a hardwood. So you'd have to consider these things if you decide on that. One downside of the fact that you have these two grooves next to each other is of course that your doors will have the same distance. So there's always this gap that separates the two doors. And if you don't want that, there's another option. You can cut a rabbit at the bottom of the, the door. And with that rabbit, the door can overhang the middle ridge. I'll show you here in this cross section that you can see what I mean. It's a very rough drawing but I've, I'm sure you get the idea. Um, so you can narrow the gap between the doors. That's another option that you have. 
What about the width of the grooves? I made them about two millimeters or one sixteenth of an inch wider than the material thickness of my doors. Um, that's because uh, I want to have I want them to have play, but I don't want them to be too loose. Things to consider here is the finish that you want to apply. If you're going to paint everything, then obviously you'll have to consider the, the coat, the thickness of the coat of paint that you're going to apply. Um, and if you're only going to oil the whole thing with a little coat of oil, then you will not need as much. Um, I think it's best to do a test cut, so use a piece of scrap from the same material that you're going to build your cabinet with, and then cut the groove, run a door in it, maybe even paint it or finish it with the finish that you're planning on using, so that you get a feeling of how much wider the groove needs to be um, for the door to slide easily without being too loose. My fourth tip is about a small trick that I've discovered when I made a mistake on my last cabinet build because that cabinet was not exactly square, it was just a little bit out of square. And obviously since my door was square, um, when I run it against the panel this, at the side, you have a gap that's not the same width. So it's clearly visible that your cabinet is out of square. But if you cut a groove, in the side panel so that the door actually ends up in this groove. It doesn't really matter if the cabinet is completely square because there will not be a gap visible. Um, so this helps. It's very easily done because you're cutting the grooves anyway so it's not much work to actually do another one in the right and do another one in the left panel. But it helps a lot in just making the whole thing look nicer, even if you made a little mistake and maybe the whole thing is not completely square. If you don't want to use the groove, of, of course you can always adjust the, the angle of the door a little bit. So you just take a track saw or something and you cut a slight angle on the door. That's another option, but I, in this case, went for the upright groove and that makes the whole thing very easily done. Point five is about the finish and the sliding mechanism. So with my last cabinet, I applied some oil-based finish both to the cabinet and to the complete door. And then I realized that the two finishes that touch each other at the bottom of the groove and the bottom edge of the sliding door, that they actually stuck to each other and that it was very hard to actually slide the door. So you might keep that in mind, depending on what finish you're planning on using, um, that the two sides that are finished, that they might actually stick to each other. So in this case, I only applied the finish to the groove, but not to the bottom edge of the door. Or another option is to get some gliding tape that you can buy. Um, usually you get it in transparent or white, and then you just glue that tape um, to the bottom of the groove. And that is a material that's very smooth and has very low friction, so you can very easily slide anything on top of it. If you don't want that, there are also sliding pads available that you can attach that you can attach to the bottom of the door. So you attach it to the bottom edge of the door. If you use that, um, you just get these usually sticky pads. They may be maybe an inch or two or five centimeters in length, um, and you just attach them to the bottom. But then, of course, your groove has to be a little bit deeper so that those pads are not visible from the front. So these options are there. Um, either try to use a finish that glides anyway. Um, don't apply the finish to both sides, but only to the groove. Use the tape or use the gliding pads. Any of these options will work. The last point is about the hardware that you use as handles. I went for simple holes, which I thought was easiest, but there are other options available, like these ones. The only thing to keep in mind is that you usually cannot use regular handles, because if you think about it, if you attach a handle on this door and you move it, you have the risk of smashing that handle against the other door and then breaking it off. So you don't want to risk that because it would probably ruin the look here. You'd 
get some torn out handle and so on. So regular handles are no use. So either just drill holes um, and the best way to do this cleanly is to do it like I did here in this build. You drill a small pilot hole and then you take a force a bit and you drill about to the half of the material thickness here um, from one side and then you drill the other half from the other side and then you have clean edges on both sides. If you want to go for hardware you usually take something like this which will have to be cut into um, the door and then it doesn't stick out but it gives you a cavity in which you can put your hand to move um, I didn't go for these because we like the, the holes better, but these are the things that you can use. So I hope you found these tips useful. Um, sliding doors are very interesting in use and often in many places in the house they can be very practical because you don't have the door sticking out when the cabinets opened. And I hope you enjoy your own build of sliding door cabinets. Hope to see you back on the next video. Here next to me is another one for you to watch. Take care and stay safe. Bye-bye.